contact, we continue our conversation about the disputes between the Palestinians and the Israelis with the Palestinian activist, Dr. Sami Al-Aryan. Uh, so, Sami, I want to talk about a couple things. Uh, I want to focus on this very uh, right-wing shift uh, within the Israeli society, uh, something that I uh, witnessed. Uh, I first went to Israel, lived in Jerusalem uh, in the late 80s. Uh, it's a very different country. Uh, but before we talk about that, uh, the Biden administration uh, has been completely tone deaf. Uh, there's no daylight between the kinds of statements that Nancy Pelosi or uh, the Secretary of State uh, are making about uh, what's happening, especially in Gaza, and, and the far right of the Republican Party. Did that surprise you? Not at all. I mean, I've lived in the United States for four decades. I've seen the stranglehold that Zionist organizations, particularly its lobby groups, have on politicians. I, I, I uh, experienced that firsthand when I was lobbying against the use of secret evidence in Congress within the administration. So we understand all that. Yet, we see today that there is a crack, major crack in that support. Yeah, yes, the oldies, you know, Biden, Pelosi, and others are still uh, are still hostages, basically, to the Israeli lobby. But there are many other politicians within Congress, you know, very few in the Senate, much fewer in the Senate, but also across the United States, where this Israeli narrative has been exposed and been rejected. And we see even within the Jewish communities a massive resistance to the Israeli narrative, to this uh, 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 call that Israel is a democracy defending itself. This is no longer, really no longer people believe this if they have any kind of an objective reading what's actually happening on the ground. What they are doing is simply supporting an apartheid-like regime and history tells us that this is the you know this is not going to continue because people would know better, particularly now with with the with the with the, there is no monopoly of information uh, anymore. When I came to the United States in this it's 1975 and beyond, there were only 30 minutes of news at 6:30. You know, ABC, NBC, CBS. That is no longer the case. People are getting their information now from everywhere, 24/7, and I don't think you can hide what the, what Israel is doing to the Palestinians anymore. And if people would like to be on the side of of of, of repression on the side of colonialist settlers and on the, the, on the side of people who actually target and murder children then be it but one day or another they have to be called into account and that's what's going to happen i mean we see today that even people within congress that is unheard of who come on the halls of congress in the well of the congress and criticize israeli behavior and call on the administration to be even handed or at least to call a spade a spade and to talk about the the casualties and the killing of children uh, by Israel, by by American bombs. I mean that put that that makes America culpable of what's going on. It's part of the problem, not part of the solution. And I think uh, at one point or another, the United States would be held to account, and they would come and and correct uh, that particular uh, position on the issue of the Israeli right. Yes, this has been going on since 1977, slowly but surely, and now for the past 15 years or so. We see that the Israeli right has now a total control of the Israeli body politic. The only difference is that they, they, within themselves, it's either the right or the, or the extreme right or the ultra right. It's not true. There is no center anymore. There is no left anymore. And that's why they cannot form a government because everybody is competing within that camp to become the next prime minister. Now they had four elections and they're probably going to end up with a fifth one because they can't decide who would be uh, leading the Israeli right and the Israeli, the, this uh, uh, road towards establishing greater Israel. But I think they will have a surprise, is that, you know, w thinking that they have already settled the conflict by that and the Palestinians have given up, and I think we're back now to square one, where they see that uh, there are all the different fault lines within that society. Not only they can't form a government, but they also cannot even uh, uh, have the Palestinians be, uh, be, uh, being totally uh, dominated in a way that they can impose their will. They can't impose their will anymore. And I think the resistance is going to increase, not decrease. And I think within even the Israeli society today, they have been determined response of the Palestinians and also the, 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 the global support that is coming slowly against the uh, practices of the Israeli army and the Israeli government towards the rights of the Palestinians. What has shocked me, I first moved to Jerusalem in 1988. I knew Yitzhak Rabin, covered him. He was, of course, assassinated by a far-right settler 
is the way the these right wing settlers, what is it, about a half million of whom now live in occupied territory, have really seized control. Uh, along with the most retrograde elements, the, the former uh, Koch party, which was outlawed but has been resurrected in uh, Atzma, Yehudit, uh, and then you have these uh, right-wing soccer hooligans and the uh, Lahava uh, movement, which calls for the total expulsion of all Palestinians inside Israel in the occupied territories to neighboring Arab states. These have moved to the center of political power, which was unthinkable uh, before Rabin's assassination. And, uh, and then, of course, we've now had 11 years of this with uh, Bibi Netanyahu, a close ally of Trump, has built relationships with other right-wing governments uh, in Brazil and Hungary uh, and Poland and everywhere else. Uh, but I think that that shift, that political shift, is important to note because when I lived in Israel, the 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 peace movement, whatever its faults, uh, was was vibrant, uh, and it's been extinguished virtually, and that makes Israel in many ways a different country. Can you address that? Absolutely. I mean, what you see today is a manifestation, obviously, of twelve years of uh, an attempt to impose. Israeli will on Palestinians and work towards Greater Israel by bringing uh, through a flawed process called Oslo uh, settlements uh, throughout the years. When Oslo uh, was signed back in 93-94, there were hard, hardly 150,000 settlers inside the occupied territories, particularly the West Bank and Jerusalem. Today, they number over 800,000, including East Jerusalem, which makes any kind of political settlement impossible. Now, uh, keep in mind that much of these settler movements have been financed directly by U.S. extremists, Jewish extremists, particularly, you know, Sheldon Adelson, who, who died a few months ago, who was actually the chief financier of these settlements around Jerusalem. Today, the problem in Sheikh Jarrah, which is a district in Jerusalem, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the claim that these, these buildings belong to a settler movement, uh, these, these movements are being financed by uh, extreme movements within the United States in the United States, and the, you know, and getting even uh, tax-free, uh, tax-free uh, status. So the U.S. has been part and parcel of this problem. The extremist uh, right has been part at the center of this, and also the extreme, the extremists in the in the United States. You know, those who actually finance both the lobbying in the U.S. as well as the settlement movement uh, in in Palestine, Israel. Now, in terms of Israeli policies, that they they are singing the same tune. Of Netanyahu and his right-wing groups. Netanyahu has been in power now for 12 years and he's quoted in 2001 right before he became a prime minister is that his main task is going to be to delay, derail and make sure that peace process is never does, does never succeed because his aim and, and that's his quoted it's in the internet anybody can google it and hear him saying that in Hebrew, but there are also, there is English translation, which says that he will make damn sure that there will be no settlement and that Israel will retain the the, uh, the, the properties in, 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 in the West Bank, in Jerusalem, and throughout. And now the fruition of this, if you want to see the blueprint of how Netanyahu thinks, all what you have to do is go and read the so-called deal of the century, steel of the century, I call it, in which, uh, you know, they were trying to impose their will on the Palestinians by creating pockets of cantoons in the, in, the, in, the, in the language of South African apartheid for Palestinians with tunnels and bridges and undergrounds in which uh, Israel will have sovereignty throughout the Palestinian territories, which is basically the total domination of one group over the other, the classical definition of what colonialist settler project is. That's what they are offering, and the Palestinians refuse and resist. And that's going to continue. That's not going to stop. And when, it, when the United States stops funding this attempt to impose a racial hierarchy in terms of uh, uh, Jewish supremacy, the way white supremacists are trying to impose their will in the United States over other uh, uh, other uh, races like blacks and Latinos and others, this is what we are confronted with and this is what needs to be, this is what the struggle is all about. Mm -hmm. And I think the hi history is on the side of those who fight for justice and fight for equality. I can't see, I can't imagine that when the people, when people in the United States get all the facts, 
then they will side with Jewish supremacists or you, Zionists you know, or bro. Israelis who are trying to impose their will and well, take all right? the land right. Right. from the river to the sea. I think the end result is going to be the dismantlement of such system, the, the, the ending of racial hierarchy, the ending of a settler colonial project, and uh, eventually that's going to take a lot of suffering, a lot of blood, a lot of uh, 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 victims. But uh, that's the nature of sacrifices. I mean, we weep for every child when they die, and for every man and woman when they are injured and when they are being targeted. But there is no other recourse. I mean, the, the world has failed us, has betrayed the Palestinians. For 28 years, they told the Palestinians, come, uh, uh, recognize Israel, and within five years, you're going to have your rights in the West Bank and Gaza. 28 years later, and it's even worse than it's ever been. So I think the Palestinians are no longer, no longer believe in such flawed processes. The United States has to step up to the plate. It's as, as much responsible to the suffering of the Palestinians as Israelis are because they are enabling them to do what they want. They are financing them. They are giving them all the ammunition. Every bullet that Palestinians was shot off was made in the United States. Every plane was made in the United States. Every bomb was, 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 was financed and imported and paid for and delivered to Israel by the United States. And, and, and the United States they has to come to, uh, to realize that it is part of the problem, and unless they do major correction, it's going to continue to suffer in this part of the world. People do not hate America because they of their democracy or because of of, of, of their freedom. People uh, abhor the policies of the United States because it is not just. They try to punish the Palestinians so that they can please the Israelis. Well, I remember being in Gaza after a bombing strike and picking up fragments from a bomb and a piece of it had made in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I think that you would agree that the moment the United States pulls the plug, that's why I support the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, that colonial settler project is not viable. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely right. I think this a major part, uh, the, the, you know, if, if Israel loses the support of the United States, that will be the end of a project called Apartheid Israel. We're going to have a new phase, a new era, in which you could actually finally find peace in the Middle East, because then uh, Israel can no longer, Israel that we know today as an aggressive uh, apartheid, racist, settler, colonial state will no longer be the case. And I think that's when you actually could see a major difference, but that's a big if, because it needs a lot of struggle, not only against that system in Palestine, but also within the United States. And that puts a lot of uh, uh, focus on the now movements now coming in the U.S. to ask for equality and to America. ask for the end of the support of, of, of America to, to Israel, whether it's through BDS or other means. But the goal is clear, and the goal is to end apartheid in Palestine, Israel, and to also to uh, call for the full restoration of Palestinian rights after so much suffering. Great, thank you. That was Palestinian political activist, Dr. Sami Palarian. Thank you.